Okay, so here's the finished motorcycle. Um, I haven't really been updating these videos much lately because I've just been busy with uh, life stuff. But uh, yeah, here it is. She's all done. Um, well, the only thing I really need to do that's left is I need to um, get a couple new sprockets and chain. And um, I still need to make a little plastic cover in here just so the oil and stuff coming off the chain doesn't splatter anywhere else I don't want it to. And um, I still need to make a plastic cover for the front here so that when the when you drive through a puddle the front tire you know whips up a bunch of water and I don't really want the water getting into there so I'm gonna just make a little flat cover there so that the water just drips down. So yeah I'm gonna take the um, the fairing and the tank off here in a sec and I'll show you what uh, how she works. So as you can see this thing is just a massive pile of batteries and to interconnect all the batteries I used of course large zero gauge wire and I use that also as well for the controller and motor connections. Uh, so where do I start? Um, okay so I guess first things first um, the remote boards which I built a while back you'll see them um, all on the sides of the batteries here so each one of those is connected to a single module or cell I guess you could say in this case and they're all interconnected with this ribbon cable so what it actually is it is is it's a 10 pin ribbon cable split into two so it's a five wire interface and you know one wire comes in and one wire goes out so I guess the only disadvantage of setting this thing up is that as you go along and you're um, crimping down these uh, ribbon cable connectors you kind of just need to know how far away the next one is I guess you don't you just need to make sure you crimp in another cable at the same time to go to the next remote. So that's about it. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of those remotes. You can see there's, there's, there's 24 of them on here somewhere. And if you're really observant, you'll see that they're blinking. And each one is, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, heat shrunk in a clear heat shrink. So they're all uh, electrically isolated um, from everything that they're touching and uh, and of course um, the way they're mounted is that they're just mounted with foam tape so there's a bit of space in between uh, whatever they're touching and them themselves of course and then there's the heat shrink on top of that so they're pretty well insulated um, there's really very small chance of them uh, ever shorting out on anything and uh, And so there's there's 24 of those remotes, and they're all scattered around the bike. And as well here, here's the main contactor. Um, this is the main fuse here, um, and this smaller bit right here is the pre-charge relay and pre-charge resistor. So in the configuration that I have this thing set up in, um, I found that the ideal resistor to use is a roughly 100 ohm resistor. Um, on the Altrax controller, I just have the key switch um, hooked directly up to battery positive. So I'm not sure whether bat battery positive draws uh, a fair amount of current or the key switch does, but on Altrax is schematic, they specify a one kilo ohm resistor, and I found that's just not sufficient. It's much too high of a value to effectively pre charge the controller. In the configuration I have it. So even in the configuration I have it, with a 100 ohm pre-charge resistor, the motor controller only gets pre-charged up to about 70 volts or so, even with an 80 volt pack. So there's still about uh, maybe 8 to 9 volts um, that is uh, going to be across this main contactor when it closes. So uh, yeah, I found that the 100 ohm resistor is pretty much the ideal way to go. It's big enough to limit the um, inrush current to a very low level. You know, it'll, it'll only be about 0.8 amps peak maximum. Um, and it's still low enough to supply enough current to the controller that it can pre-charge up um, enough before the main contactor closes. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> 
And the way I have it set up as well is that the pre-charge cycle takes about five seconds. So between you turning the ignition and being able to drive away is about five seconds. So it's, it's not too bad at all. So all the relays are controlled by the main box here, the, the pre-charge relay, the main relay, as well as the charge relay, I'll talk about that in a second, is controlled by this main box. Um, the display is uh, powered and controlled through, by this main box through this 16-way ribbon cable. And um, the remotes, of course, uh, communicate to the main box via this 5-way ribbon cable. Uh, what else is there? Um, so there's a few switch inputs. There's the ignition, of course, to the box. Um, there's just raw 12 volt power to the box. And then there's um, this switch here in the back, right here. It's kind of hard to see. That's the charge switch. So if this switch is on, that means that it tells the BMS that uh, to activate the charge relay so that you can charge the bike. And um, that will allow you to charge the bike without the ignition in. So uh, you don't need to have the ignition key in the bike or anything like that to be able to charge it up. So that's uh, why I added that feature. And um, what else? Uh, there's, so, there's so much stuff on here to talk about. I'm pretty much going to have to fire it up pretty quick here. And uh, yeah, the DC to DC converter is in the back here. And um, this here is my charge connection, so that's the high voltage battery pack connection right there. And this little connector here, that's the connections for that charge relay I was talking about. So, that, so that'll actually control the power going to the um, relay. Um, in, in my case it's a power bar. And so that'll actually physically control the mains power going to the charger, so it can shut down the charger by cutting off uh, mains power to the charger. So it's much safer than, uh, much better and safer in my opinion than disconnecting the charger from the bike on the DC side. So yeah, it just shuts down. It's like unplugging your charger from the wall essentially is what that does. Um, and that's about it. Uh, the rest of the functions on the bike, like the lights and the turn signals, all that kind of stuff is uh, essentially stock, so um, all that is just running off the standard uh, circuits, circuitry and stuff from the original bike, so I haven't, I've hacked that a little bit, but it's uh, pretty well um, standard stuff. So there's the display as you can see. So uh, I think it's time to fire it up. So let's fire it up. Alright, so the BMS is on now. I flicked that switch in the back there. Um, this one right here, and that turns on the 12 volt rail on the bike. And I think I may have found a glitch here as I was filming this video. Um, when I turned on the BMS initially, uh, one of the remotes wasn't responding, so I just uh, turned it off and then I just unplugged the remote and hooked it back up and it was all fine again. I turned the BMS back on and, and uh, everything's responding again now. But uh, yeah, I think I may have a minor glitch in, in, these, in the code for these remotes. Uh, because it seems like one got locked up there when I turned on the BMS, so... Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on, I'll have to investigate that further, but... Anyway, um, here's it working uh, normally. So you can see uh, we've got 79 volts in the top left there. Um, current is in, the bottom, is in the bottom left, and it's approximately zero right now. And we got about 3.3 to 3.29 volts per cell. So you can see all those on the, on the display there. Um, so yeah, so that's how the BMS works, and um, I guess now it's time to fire it up, so I'm just going to try to find my key here, wherever that is. Oh, I left it over here. There we go. Alright, so I'm just going to turn the key. Lights come on, the controller is being pre-charged. There, that's the main relay that just went, and she's running. So uh, I can give the throttle a twist here. About 12 amps. 22 amps or so. 
And I'll try to give you some video of the sprocket here. Yeah, so the only main thing I really have left to do here is um, make a cover for this, uh, a plastic cover so that grease and stuff doesn't get flung against these remotes and the batteries and things. So yeah, that's the bike. Um, like I said, all I need left really is to get a uh, decent chain and some new sprockets on there because uh, I think, especially that rear one there is essentially toast last time I checked it. Um, so yeah, I may have a slight bug with these remotes, but uh, all in all it works really well. I just need to, maybe I need to tweak a parameter in, in those things or something, but I'm sure I'll figure it out eventually. I'll have to take another look at the code. But uh, yeah, that's the bike and uh, everything's working awesome. So I'm pretty excited to take this thing for a spin on the road for the first time and uh, Maybe a couple weeks if it gets warm. Uh, today it was almost plus 10 out, so uh, yeah, a day or two of that, or a couple days of that, and the road is clear, and uh, it's pretty easy to take it out for a spin. Of course, you kind of need a chain on the bike to take it out for a spin, so that's the next thing in progress. So yeah, hope you liked the videos, and um, I hope that the um, next video hopefully will be uh, this thing on the road. Uh, Taking, taking her for a spin out on the road. Oh, and just one more obvious thing I kind of missed to point out here is that, um, like I said before, when the when the green lights flash on the remotes, that, that means it's taking a cell measurement. So when the BMS is on, um, all the remotes are synchronized. So they all take measurements at exactly the same time. So the, um, the values you see come up on the display, um, especially, and the pack voltage especially, are a, uh, a snapshot of that moment in time. So um, at any moment in time, um, uh, the, these are just a, a snapshot of the voltages. Oh, that's too bright for the camera. Um, th these are just a snapshot of the voltages at, at a specific moment in, moment in time. So uh, that, that's really what you want is when uh, you have a BMS on a, on a motorcycle or an electric car like this, um, you really want all the cell readings to come in at the exact same time so you can get a, a real idea of uh, what your battery pack's doing. If, if the measurements come in at different times, um, you're really going to struggle figuring out what cell is bad, what cell is good, because, you know, the cells will be under different loads when those readings came in. So if, uh, if all the readings come back at the same time and you have one cell that's lower than all the other ones, then you know that that is um, the weak cell in your battery pack. So uh, I think that's a really important important uh, consideration when designing a BMS is you really need to be able to read in um, all the cell voltages at nearly the same time. Uh, so yeah, I think that's all I have. I hope you enjoyed these videos. Um, hopefully the next video will be um, of this bike out on the road, uh, given her hex. So. I'll uh, definitely upload another one when I get to that point.